You examine your last. Please examine this lump. There is a lump just above the angle of the mandible. It look like parotid origin. Sometimes it may be like this. You have to confirm whether it is in parotid origin, whether it is a parotid lump or not, whether it is malignant or not. Are you ready to confirm it? Yes. In order to differentiate whether this is in parotid origin or not, in order to differentiate whether it is malignant or not, you have to examine your patient's lump. Usually, normal lump examination you have to perform. Site, where it is situated, just above the angle of mandible. Size, how big is it? And the same, whether it is oval, round shape, or surface, whether it, is, it has smooth surface or hard surface. Consistency, soft inconsistency, firm inconsistency, hard inconsistency. So you have to check for the consistency and you have to check for the margin as well. Whether it has regular margin or irregular margin. After that, you have to check for the skin attachment, whether it is attached to skin or not. For that, you have to move skin over the lump in two perpendicular way, whether it is possible or not. Then you should ask your patient to say E. Then you have to check for the muscle attachment of lump. When you say E, your masseter will contract. So if there is a muscle attachment, you can't move the lump. If you can move the lump, there is no muscle attachment. Then ask your patient to open the mouth. Then carefully look for the opposite side of second upper molar tooth here, where the parotid duct is open. Check whether there is any swelling, redness, any features of inflammation, any pus discharge. So you have to carefully look for parotid duct opening. Then ask your patient to say, ah, what are you going to look for? You are going to look for tonsillar bulging, ipsilateral tonsillar bulging. If there is inflammation of the parotid gland, your tonsil, ipsilateral tonsil will be swelled. So, in addition to that, you have to check for the integrity of facial nerve. Your facial nerve runs through the parotid gland. If there is a facial nerve involvement, the features of facial nerve also you can see. You should ask your patient to wrinkle the forehead like this. Wrinkle the forehead, whether it is possible or not. Ask your patient to close the eyes against the resistance. Against the resistance. So ask your patient to blow out the cheek. Like this. Then ask your patient to show the teeth. Like this. Show the teeth like this. Then you have to carefully look for the cervical lymphadenopathy, especially in the same side, whether there is a cervical lymphadenopathy or not. Then you should offer to examine the parotid duct. Ask from your examiner, can you please give two pairs of gloves to examine the parotid duct? That is how you are going to do parotid examination. Then you have to present it to your examiner. There is a hemispherical shaped lump in the right preauricular area, which is 2.5 cm in diameter. It is firm in consistency with a regular surface and distinct margin. The lump is not attached to the skin or underlying masseter. Facial nerve is intact and there is no cervical lymphadenopathy. So my clinical diagnosis is a benign paranoid tumor, most probably a pleomorphic adenoma. That is how you are going to present. But at the end of your presentation, your examiner will ask for the set of questions. Are you ready to answer those questions? Your examiner will ask, what are the differential diagnoses for unilateral parotid lump? There is a unilateral parotid lump. What it can be? What it can be due to? It can be due to malignant tumor. It can be benign. It can be parotid lymph node. It can be sialolithiasis, obstruction of salivary duct. It can be sialadenitis, infection of the salivary gland. 
it can be due to sarcoidosis it can be due to facial nerve neuroma or it can be something else not related to parotid gland like outside lipoma sebaceous cyst hypertrophied masseter muscles so next question what are the type of benign parotid tumor what are the type of benign parotid tumor most common one is pleomorphic adenoma or it can be monomorphic adenoma as well so o adenolymphoma worthens tumor what are the type of malignant parotid tumor mucoepidermoid carcinoma adenocystic carcinoma o oncocytoma those are the malignant parotid tumor mucoepidermoid carcinoma adenocystic carcinoma o oncocytoma what do you know about epidemiology of parotid tumor when you examine us so you can't say i don't know anything about epidemiology of parotid tumor it is nice to know when coming to parotid tumor 80% of salivary neoplasms affect the parotid gland you know we have three salivary glands 80% of salivary neoplasms belong to parotid gland 80% of them are benign how nice both are 80% 80% of benign parotid tumor are pleomorphic adenoma wow 380s are there 80% of them benign pleomorphic adenoma that is why when i come to diagnose my diagnosis i said most probably a pleomorphic adenoma next question what are the clinical features of malignant lump how how can you say this is a malignant lump pain and recent rapid growth in history hard inconsistency hard inconsistency irregular surface and ill defined edge irregular surface and ill defined edge fixed to skin or underlying muscles fixed to masseter muscles facial nerve involvement those are indicate this tumor is most probably malignant what is the operation for pleomorphic adenoma this is a benign condition but sometime you may have to do the surgery conservative superficial parotidectomy by preserving facial nerve you have to preserve the facial nerve your facial nerve run through the parotid gland what are the specific complication of parotidectomy facial nerve palsy salivary fistula and fray's syndrome it is a nice syndrome to know please go and refer book what is fray's syndrome it is also called gustatory setting that is all regarding the parotid gland short case thank you very much bye